I'm about to install the shower drain. Don't mind the mess. And I had seen a video on YouTube where they used, they called it a uh, plumber's putty. That essentially to me means butyl tape because that's exactly what it looked like. I thought it couldn't hurt to put a little on here so that it creates a seal. So I'm gonna do that and it also kind of help keep it in place while I'm uh, screwing from the other side and I'm going to caulk around the seams and don't worry this is just like a film um, to protect it for now. And now I'm gonna go underneath and show you my big mistake and to also show you how I'm gonna be screwing um, the drain on. Don't mind my hair or <laughs> all the sawdust all over me. Oh shoot, it's like everywhere. Um, I was drilling underneath the RV so it was just pouring down on me. I did a huge mistake and I hope everyone learns from me and maybe you're just smart enough that you've realized that you should have done this beforehand but I did not see any ugh, on any forum or van build or anything that I've been researching that said that you should do this beforehand and I'm going to show you. Alright, this is my hole. That is the drain. So initially I drilled a two inch hole, what I thought the size of the drain would be and because it was the same size hole as the drain hole coming off the shower pan. Little did I know to leave enough room because what you need to do is your drain comes with a little gasket and a nut and you're supposed to tighten it to the drain or yeah between the shower pan um, so that it stays and then you add on all your other you know plumbing accessories like so and I didn't do that and that's a big step when you are installing a shower pan you should definitely get this installed first with this and any like accessories coming down so you can just put it through your hole because then I probably only needed to make a two inch hole so now I have this monstrosity because my uh, circular drill bit was not working and I had to use my one inch one to just get it to open I think what I'm gonna do is take some foam and spray all in here once I have my drain pipe coming down and then spray that with like a truck bed liner just to protect it because you know that's the only thing I could come up with just know if you mess up there's almost always a solution it may not be the solution that you wanted or one that looks the nicest but there is a solution just wanted to put that out there I'm gonna get this installed and I'm gonna try to mount this gray tank it's going to be going right here my thought process was I'd rather have one under the shower because we're not gonna be using the shower as much as our sh uh, sink I believe and I didn't want to have to run the plumbing you know if you can see like all the way down the vehicle like where the exhaust was I didn't want to worry about having to protect it so it just made sense to put one right underneath okay that is in it's as tight as it's gonna get and now i'm gonna attach all of my like plumbing fixtures and show you what i got for my gray water this is my gray water tank for the shower it's a 10 gallon so it's pretty tiny what i bought is this hepbo trap and from what i researched they say you should mount this about four inches above your tank it may or may not be that way. I don't think the shower is gonna get that smelly, but just for an extra precaution, I bought this and I bought one for the sink as well. So I'm gonna install it. Now, what I had to buy is this piece from Home Depot. This is going to screw on to the drain. I will need to cut a little piece of one and a half inch pipe because that's what's gonna fit in here. And then from there, this is going to thread into here. So essentially it's going to, I don't know if you can see that. There you go. It's gonna look like that with a little piece of half inch to connect the two. And I have these other little doodad pieces that I bought and I'm not sure why. I will, I, I know I, I had it all planned out at Home Depot and we're, we're just gonna see how it works. So let's do it. All right, I have my first piece of PVC on. I wasn't able to get the plumber's tape on in this weird angle. I'm not really worried about there being leaks since it's going down, not over, and this hole is a lot smaller and I don't think it's going to splash back up, so I'm not worried. I mean, it is, it is, it is not budging. So what I have to do now is cut a little, little, little one and a half inch PVC because then my HEPO chop's going to attach to that. But everything else, 
that is not just thread on where I can use plumber's tape. I'm going to be using this. It's a primer and glue and you you do the primer and then you do the glue on, you know, where it attaches like so. I'm gonna be doing that in a second. Here's my hepfo. I did use, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little bit of this plumber's tape here. So that went on really nicely. And you know what's funny? They call it tape, plumber's tape, but it's this thin, like, smooth material. It's not tape. I thought it was sticky and it's not. It comes like that. This is the stuff. You prime it, you put this on, and then you stick it together, voila. I'm probably oversimplifying it and I should probably be wearing gloves. So it wouldn't open and I just kind of banged it against the cement and then it went poof. So this stuff is not coming off. It's like already stuck on there and I'm just getting it everywhere. Oh well. So <laughs> let's see if I can do this. So I'm pretty sure you just kind of like, you just kind of do like this. So and then Oh, why does this not want to open? All right, technical difficulty. Okay, well, if you can hear that, it's about to thunderstorm out, so I'm trying to get this done as quickly as possible. Let's re reiterate, I have my drain. I had a female threaded to one and a half inch, then a one and a half inch pipe with another female threaded one and a half inch. That goes to my hepfo, to another female one and a half inch, to a one and a half inch angle. This little piece, it's another, it's a male threaded and it came with all of my water tanks and I didn't think I was gonna use it, but it's perfect because it's a one and a half inch. I cut a piece of one and a half inch and I'm gonna put that in here and connect it to that. And then I'm done. Basically, I have some galvanized metal strapping I'm going to use to secure that with. And the last thing is, or two last things, the electric ball valve is going to go right here and it should just twist on. And then I have a little piece and I'm going to attach a little nylon hose and that's just going to be the vent and overflow. I've seen that done and it's a lot easier than if you think you have to do some kind of air vent trap. Most of these old homes had them going straight through the roof and all the plumbing was plumbed together and then they had that one going through and then there was just that random pipe in the middle of the kitchen which I didn't like. So this is my solution and we'll see if it works. I'm about to install this on one of my gray tanks. This is the sea level water tank monitor. And this was like, I don't know, $140, which seems pricey, but you know, I guess my thought process is whatever little things you can do to make your life easier. So installing the electric ball valves on the gray tanks and having a monitor set up in place so that we know when they're full instead of just guessing or when the water is backing up. So they come with three and they're about 12 inches. So one will be for gray shower, gray sink, and the fresh water. And installing these are really simple. So at the top, you'll see gray, top, and then black. So if you want this for your fresh water, don't cut anything, just install it. If you wanna use this for your gray tank, you just snip this little tab that's sticking up same with the black. Now, since I don't have a black and I have two grays, I'm, one will be my black and one will be my gray. And then here is the little monitor. My water pump will be here, fresh, gray, and black. So super simple and it shows you in percentages, which is nice. me like almost two hours I'm filthy but I will show you the end product and kind of what I did underneath so I wired up the wires before I installed it I thought that'd be easier and it was there's my big thing of wire and it's on this was the only length that would work couldn't go longer it would hang off so it's at least an inch from the top at least an inch from this and there's no metal in front of it so we're good This is the water compartment 
and for all of the wires for the tank monitors and the ball valves are all coming through this hole here and I've labeled them so I don't get confused. So I'm gonna clean up this mess, attach whatever needs to go here, and then the ones for the ball valves, I'm just gonna leave for now because I don't know how big I need to cut the hole uh, for the toggle switches, but I will show you what I had to do underneath. All of those white wires, this is the rear, and that's the gray water tank, the old one that was original, that I'm keeping for the sink and you can see the two wires coming off there one is for the ball valve and then one is the the tank monitor they all I don't know if you can see oh no you can't see it from it the hole is like right here and the, there's a wire and then okay there's the gray tank for the back and those are the old tank monitors but they're pretty uh disgusting and I didn't feel like dealing with that so that is that one installed and the wire for the gray tank hi meow I know she's appeared in all my videos um, but for anyone who hasn't seen them this is meow she's the neighborhood friendly stray cat yes I know she's been my buddy throughout this whole build she'll just kind of lay next to me while I'm doing stuff or hide underneath a RV. Yes, I know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love this cat so much. And good morning again. So today's tasks are mostly plumbing. I'm starting with the old gray tank. Uh, I had bought this three inch PVC and I thought it was gonna go to waste, but found out it actually fits the old into the old drain hole perfectly. I cut off a piece which is then going to have a reducer on it. This goes from three to one and a half. I then have to cut a piece of one and a half PVC and then I have to add this onto it. And then from there, I have a male nipple that will thread into there and then the, what is it? Um, the electric ball valve will then go onto there. So this setup cost, I don't know, $15 at most plus uh, the electric ball valve, which was like 35, so maybe like, $40, $50 investment. So here is my old hole and this fits in perfectly. I'll show you when it's done. This is what it ended up looking like, and still have to wait for the ball valve um, to get here, but I'm gonna install this now, and this should just fit right onto the old tank. So, do that. So my camera died and I didn't get to show you the rest of the gray tank for the uh, sink. So I'm gonna show you that now. So that is the finished product. I went over all the different PVC pieces with you, but here is the ball valve on the end. I think I showed the sea level, but I don't think I showed it all hooked up. So we have our battery. Right now we have 22% in the fresh tank and nothing in any of the gray tanks. And here are the toggle switches. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that it was informative and please leave any questions in the comments and I will try to answer them. And please like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. Thank you.